Ready? Go! <laughs> Look around any schoolyard, a park, or even down the street, and you will see children moving, and often with an incredible amount of energy. I'm always looking for ways to help students structure that freedom of movement into a creative and artistic experience. This DVD offers various exercises and tools to bring creative movement or dance to the students that you work with. After some creative and physical warm-ups, we will begin to focus our movement exploration on the theme of friendship. Finding and being a quality friend is something that we all hope for. Through partner dances, the students will strengthen not only their creativity, but also their cooperation, trust, and compassion. This icebreaker is used to wake students up creatively and physically while creating a sense of connection within the group. So before we begin dancing or choreographing anything, we need to do some warm-ups. And the first warm-up game that we're going to play is called Run to the Middle If. And it's going to not only get us physically warm, but it's going to start us thinking creatively as well. It's a really simple game. We're going to start standing in a circle. Okay, so let's make our circle just a little bigger, so take a little step out. Excellent. So, the game is very simple. I'm going to say, run to the middle if, and you're going to run to the middle of the circle and you're going to do whatever I say, like dance, if what I say is true about you. Okay, so you need to listen very closely. If it's true, you run to the middle and do whatever action I'm doing. Okay, let's give it a trial. Run to the middle and dance. If you're over 20 years old. And then back to my spot. Run to the middle and dance if you're under 20 years old. And back out again. Excellent. Run to the middle and bark like a dog. Or meow like a cat. Meow. If you have a pet, cat or dog. <laughs> Run to the middle and oh, act like a monkey if you like to eat bananas. Run to the middle and paint a beautiful painting. Many feet if you like to do visual arts. someone if you're ready to keep dancing <laughs> excellent this continuous series explores basic dance elements body shape Levels, direction, dynamics, and use of space are layered as we progress from working on the spot to moving around the room. Attention to focus and listening, as well as spatial awareness, are heightened. For the next warm-up, we all need to find a spot of our own where we're not going to touch anybody else or the edges of the room. Go! Do you have a good spot? Okay, show me a big shape with your body. Excellent. Show me another big shape. Show me a very small shape. Show me a high level shape. Oh, cool. And a low level. 
Oh, I love the way that your legs extended out there, Alex. That's great. Show me a different low-level shape. Woo! Wow, cool. So I'm seeing some shapes that are really low to the ground and some that are a little bit higher, and I like that you're using your arms as well. Show me a high-level shape. How about low curvy? In a count of 10, we're going to slowly crunch down through our hands, through all of our joints, till we end up in a low level, crunched up shape on the floor. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, crunching, three, through the joints, sharp, six, seven, eight, nine, and crunch. Let's slowly grow up like we're filling up with air until we are high and open. One, two, three, four, five, six, like we're filling up with air till we are open. And ten. Really fill up with air, even your face. Good. Fill up your fingertips with air. Keep breathing though. And then get a slow leak on one side. One. Two, collapsing on one side, four, five, six, seven, all the way down to the floor, nine, ten, until you're wrinkled on the floor like a shriveled up balloon. <laughs> Great. Nice. And then filling yourself back up, growing out of the ground with sharp edges like an ice castle growing out of the ground. So use your hands to push up to the ceiling. One, two, three, four. Five, reaching up with sharp hands. Six, like an ice castle. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Hands very high, chest up. And what we're going to do is we're going to take three steps like this. One, two, three. And then we're going to turn to somebody next to us and say, Oh, hello, in your very best king or queen voice. Are you ready? And one, two, three. Hello. Show me your very best muscle man. Show me the muscles of your legs. Show me the muscle of your face. Or... This time, instead of saying one, two, three, hello, we're going to do one, two, three, I'll be back. <laughs> and one. nice and tall and hands together. The next part we're going to move through the levels from high to low and we're going to move around the room without touching anyone else. So really using the space diving from high all the way down to low. Okay? Nice freezes. Good. We've got all the different levels here. We've got a nice medium low level. We've got some medium levels all the way over to a nice high level. This time, when you hit the high level, can you throw in just a little jump at the top? Just like a little dolphin coming out of the water. Just a little tiny hop. Ready? Show me a balance on one foot. Slowly switch to another balance. Okay, when the drum starts, side shuffles, and when the drum stops, a nice strong balance. Here we go. Change direction. Balance. Hold it. It's so hard when you're moving sideways. Let's try that one more time. These are great balances. So can you extend your balance that you're in? Make it a little bigger. And side shuffles. Balance. You can stand in neutral. Very quietly. 
I'm going to close my eyes, and I'd like you to creep without making a sound, lifting your legs very high around the space. And when I finish drumming, I want you to freeze in a very mysterious position. Introducing a theme deepens students' creative experiences. Allow them time to think, discuss, and make choices that will result in strong dance ideas. Okay, it's time to start choreographing our dances. So, to put our dances together, we're actually going to be working in pairs after, but first of all we need to have some discussion about a topic. And the topic I thought might be fun for us to work on is friendship. So I thought it would be neat for us to really think about what makes a good friend. What are the qualities of a good friend? I'm going to grab some paper and markers for us because I'd like us to have a chance to write some of those ideas down and then we're going to share them with each other and the group. Okay, so just start thinking about that. Okay, so here's a piece of paper and a marker. So if everyone can just grab one and get yourself comfortable for writing. So when I say go, you're going to write about the qualities of a good friend. And it might be a friend that you have that you can describe, or it might be the way that you act towards your friends. Okay? And go. And just keep writing. Let's try to even fill our papers up. I wonder if we can do that. So even if you can't think of anything, write the same thing over again until something new comes to your mind. What do you think makes a good friend? What would you look for? What are some of the things that you do with your friends? And nobody's going to read these. This is just brainstorming. Okay, so just take a few seconds to read over what you wrote. We're just going to turn to somebody next to us. You can just pair off like this and then have a little discussion about what you wrote down. So what are the qualities of the friend that you wrote down um, and some of those ideas? They might be in your head still or they might be on the paper. Okay, so let's just turn and talk to a partner for a few minutes about your ideas. Uh, for me, I put down um, shopping, duh, watching movies, hanging out, playing sports, for example, soccer and basketball, going for walks. And sometimes, like, chill out, draw. Sometimes we'll play computer, not often. And yeah. Um, I put generous break. Yeah, we usually just do those kind of things. Okay, so finish up. Great. So I'm going to call this the word box because we are going to use these yellow sticky notes and we are going to write some of the special words from our discussions. So some of the words you wrote down that you think are some of the best qualities of a friend. Or maybe some of the ones that are very interesting to you personally as a friend. Yes, oh, six sticky notes. So you could fit many on one sticky note. Oh yeah, that, that's a good Which idea. So, we have more than six. Oh. And some of the actions too, some of the things that you do. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. What? Um, it didn't have enough room. Um, Okay, so what, what kinds of things do you do with your friends? I play soccer. Okay, so write that down. You play soccer. What else do you do? Yeah. Trash words. Great, why don't you put that word down? Yeah, nice. Good. Okay, so now we're going to have a chance to share some of the ideas that we wrote in our groups with everyone. 
So we're gonna go group by group. We're gonna start over here, and you can just tell us some of the ideas that you wrote down on your yellow papers. Go ahead. We think a good friend is loyal, trust trustworthy, knows how to compromise, funny but doesn't make everything a joke. Um, we also have considerate, sympathetic, honest, and helpful. Um, we also have trustworthy, and we think good friend keeps secrets, and I play soccer with my friends. I think a good friend um, supports you and shares their lunch, and um, my friends and I go shopping for stuff. Uh, we think that a good friend is respectful, communicative, generous, giving, dependable, and ambitious. And with my friends, I like to go shopping, see movies, hang out, and go for walks. Um, and what I, what the, the qualities of my friends are, uh, they're very aware, they like to talk a lot, so they're talkative. Um, they're very brave and courageous, they're trustworthy, honest, loyal, uh, thoughtful, uh, caregiving. And what I do with my friends is talk, laugh, but not to hurt anyone's feelings. Okay, that's great. So you can see how some of us had similar words in some of our groups. I think trustworthy came up, shopping came up, and that's really neat to see that we have some of those similar ideas about the good qualities of a friend. There's lots of amazing ideas here that are going to really help us create our dances later on when we need ideas to draw upon about the qualities of a friend. Okay, when I look you in the eye, you can come up and put your stickies on the front of the box. start using these words to create our dances. Mirroring develops focus, concentration, and cooperation. Emphasis must be placed on moving slowly at first so that their partners can follow. Have the students experiment with big and small actions, levels, and side directions. Encourage seamless transitions between leaders. We're just going to stand about two feet apart from each other. We're going to look each other in the eyes and focus, and then one of us will be the leader and begin to move, and the other will just follow. Follow everything that the leader is doing. And you can try different levels. can try actions that go out to the sides. Okay, so now that you've decided who's going to be the first leader, you're standing looking at your partner. When I say go, just start to move slowly. Ready, leader one? Go. Nice and slow to start. You can think about really stretching your arms, almost like you're waking up. Really extend your arms. Try some side actions. And freeze. I'm going to switch leaders, other leader take over, and go. Nice smooth movements, look at your partner. All three levels. You can think of opening and closing. Good. Keep looking at your partner, make sure they're with you. And try a twist. to a new level.
and freeze. Okay, so we're going to continue mirroring, but we're now going to take some of those ideas from the friendship topics, and we're going to try to show those through our actions. So maybe you have a word like sharing. You might be able to use your hands reaching out. Maybe you'll do something like supportive. You can do actions that are strong. Or maybe keeping secrets. So I want you to think of the words that you wrote or some of the words on our word block over here and continue with those types of actions. Just relax. Everybody can look over here. Whew. Shadowing relies on trust and cooperation. The leader in each pair needs to be aware of their partner at all times. They must use actions that are big enough for the shadow to see and that are not blocked by their own body. Leaders need to move slowly so that the shadow can stay connected. So like I said, shadowing is just like mirroring, except instead of facing your partner, you're going to face away from your partner, and my shadow is going to follow me as I lead the action. So I'm doing all those things again. I'm using the sides. I'm moving slow enough so that my partner can follow me. And I'm using all the different levels. And then I'm going to start to move through the room. And I don't even have to look back to see if my partner's following me. I'm just going to trust that Andy can tell what I am doing. And then I'll say freeze and switch, which means we'll turn around and Andy becomes the new leader. Go ahead, Andy. Good. You can take a seat. So what we're going to do now is move on to you having the chance to shadow. So we're going to stand up. Let's put leader number two in front this time, and we will start shadowing on the spot. And then I'll say move around the room. Try some low levels. Good, and you can start to move through the room now. So leaders, start to move off your spot. Move around, nice, locomoting, great. Don't forget to use different levels, nice. And freeze, switch leaders. And go, try a different level right away. Try opening or closing. You can try some sharper movements. Okay, that was great. So now what we're going to do is integrate our friendship ideas, the things that we like to do with our friends, into our shadowing. So just as with the mirroring, we did ideas like trustworthy. This time, actions that things you might do with your friends. So, everybody think of something that you do with your friends. So, Leah, what could you show us? Shopping. Shopping. Okay, great. So you're going to show us shopping actions. Let's go over to Andy. Okay, so Andy, what kind of things do you do with your friends? Well, we like do art and we usually like read some books. Okay, Alex, what do you like to do? Um, soccer. Okay, so you're going to play soccer? Uh, yeah. Excellent. Okay, so when I say go, you're going to start shadowing with your friendship action. Ready? Go! Now try some fast movements as well as the slow movements. Make sure your partner can still follow you. And you can start to slow down and find your final frozen position.
Awareness of space is important when creating partner shapes. Keep students aware of the audience view as they are creating. Different levels, extended shapes, and facial expressions can really add to the dynamics. So we're going to work on a shape together that shows one of the words that we've been talking about and we're going to make these shapes connected. So we're going to be connected somehow, our legs maybe, maybe just by our wrists, maybe we'll be doing something together like I'll be handing her something. So we're going to be a connected shape based on one of those ideas. So Kaylee, let's see, what can we do from one of those ideas? Um, how about we choose the word trustworthy? So let's imagine that I'm falling off a cliff and you are helping to save me because you are trustworthy. Let's look dramatic on our faces too. Okay, and Kaylee, do you have an idea that we could try for friendship? Keeping secrets. Okay, why don't you try low? Okay, great. Thanks, Kaylee. You can take a seat. So what I'd like you to do now is get back together with your partner, find a spot to work in the room, and start putting together two shapes to do with the friendship word list that change levels. Okay? And go. What do you want to do? I think we should maybe do honesty representing a promise, and I think knots also represent a promise, so maybe we should try to do it in a knot shape. Yeah, in different levels. Well, I have an idea that for our first one, we could probably do like giving or like generous. I could um, probably be like low hand handing you like the holy grail or something, and you could be like up high receiving it. Mm -hmm. Want to try that out? Okay. Or should we have one person on top of another? Okay. What are you guys thinking? What word are you looking at? We are looking at the word support. Okay, so let's see it. Can you show me what you're thinking? What's some of the ideas in your mind? Well, first we were going to do a knot to represent uh, the word honest. Okay, let's see that. And then I'll be like, 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 Yeah, and can maybe you find a focus with your head so that you're trying to look at each other or you're looking out to the sides. And Lenore, maybe you can extend your arm like you're reaching for something that she's helping to support you. Yeah, that's great. Nice. The dance strategies, mirroring, shadowing, and partner shapes should be explored thoroughly on their own. Once students have a strong grasp of the strategies, the use of dance elements, and developing movement on a theme, they can be combined into a choreography. This results in a more complex experience, variety, and appreciation for composition. Make sure that the dances have a strong beginning and ending position, smooth transitions, and an awareness of the audience's view. What we're going to do now is start to put all these dance tools together to create a choreography. So we're going to start from mirroring, move into shadowing, and then we're going to end with these partner shapes. And the partner shapes are going to move slowly from one to the other with a nice smooth transition. So we're going to start the whole dance in a nice low neutral position which looks like this. We're just going to go down to our knees and tuck our heads in. And then when the music begins, we'll stand up and begin to mirror, and we'll just have leader number one lead the mirroring. So leader number one is doing the mirroring, and you're doing your friendship action. So I'm being generous, and my partner is mirroring. And then, on the cue, we'll start to shadow, which means that leader number two is going to lead the shadowing through the room. And you're going to do your actions. So maybe you were shopping, 
maybe you were playing a sport and your partner is following you. And then on the third cue, it'll be partner shape number one. And then partner shape number two. And then we'll end the dance in that low neutral shape again, right down to the floor. So can you guys, this is a great shape, can you find out a way to move from your first shape to your second shape? In time to get those actions exactly like how you want them. Use different levels too, I haven't seen you go low yet, Gabriel. Can you go right down low to the ground? Good. See what you're doing? Good. Moving around the room, using the space. I'm going to try to get that way. Almost like a guy wire. Let me see the protection shape. Does it look too good? Just one. That's awesome. That's great. Good, okay. So now the audience is still over there. Which way do you want your partner, next partner shape to show? Let's see which way it goes. It's very important to leave time for the students to perform for each other. If you're working with a larger group, then having the students perform three pairs at a time can be very effective and create a sense of safety. If time permits, the opportunity to watch individual pairs gives the audience a chance to concentrate on the interpretation of the theme explored and heightens the performance aspect. Before performance, emphasis must be placed on the role of the audience. An audience must watch, listen, and interpret what the dancers are communicating through their actions and shapes. An appreciation for choreographic highlights or dance elements should also be encouraged. So I hope you are all watching very closely the other groups performing and have some ideas about how you saw the other groups interpreting the friendship ideas that we talked about. Does anybody have something that they think they saw? Can you tell us about? I actually saw Alex protecting Gabriel with his hands mostly. So Leah and Lenore 
they, they seem to be in a shape of a knot, um, reminding me of uh, honor or trust. Mm. Yeah. Um, I thought it was funny because um, when um, Lenore and Leah were shadowing, I saw them shopping, and I like shopping too. Well, um, I thought the faces that Gabriel made Alex do was really funny and interesting, so yeah. Well, I just want to say, you guys, that that was excellent work. You created some amazing dances. You used all different kinds of dance techniques. You used levels and shapes and direction and movement. And you also expressed some ideas about friendship and what's important to you um, with your friends and friendships. The students will need repeated opportunities to explore these dance strategies before evaluation. A solid understanding of body shape, levels, and use of space is necessary before the integration of body movement and thematic creation. Once students are comfortable with the dance strategies, drawing ideas from any curricula, literary, or thematic source can provide unlimited inspiration. When evaluating students, look for the level at which the student understands and executes dance elements, how the student is analyzing and interpreting themes, are they able to communicate opinions and peer evaluation of performances with clarity and precision, does the student incorporate all of the dance skills, concepts, and explorations taught? Do they perform in a focused and appropriate manner?